Well, let's talk about now over the next three videos what the new features in SQL Server 2008 are. Well, that's not true either. I'm going to start over. Three, two, one. Well, let's cover the new features in SQL Server 2008. And what we're really going to do, we're going to talk about two videos about what's new and different in SQL Server 2008. And then we've got a third video that talks about what is new and different in SQL Server 2008 R2. So we'll talk about all three of those. Now I will say this particular set, these little three videos, are targeted for people who knew SQL Server 2005 reporting services and just want to get a handle on what has changed. So if you are brand new to reporting services, then you should skip this video. You should also skip the next two. So you can go ahead and just close the video out. There's nothing more to see here. Okay, now I would say also the same thing for those of you that are still with me, but you barely used reporting services in SQL 2005. You know what? It, don't even worry about it. Don't waste the time of going through these. These are some pretty involved videos. Just go ahead and go into the next sections on uh, introduction to the databases and data sources. Okay, just you can, you, you can skip this one in the next two. All right, so who is this video for? This is, as I mentioned, this is for people who had significantly used SQL 2005 reporting services, and you want to know what the major new features are in SQL Server 2008. Okay, so we're good. This, this video and the next video is really targeted as what's the difference between SQL 2005 and 2008 okay, re regarding reporting service, their services. And of course, there are people that just want to know, and then there are those of you who do feel compelled to watch every single video, and I know there's a lot of people that are uh, like that. All right, let's do this. Let's just talk about what's changed between 2005 and 2008. Not between 2005 and 2008 R2, but specifically between the two versions, SQL Server 2005 and SQL Server 2008. Now there's going to be changes, there's going to be new things for the three groups, the system administrators, the report authors, and the report administrators. Okay, so let's kind of just break them down. So let's start off, we'll do the administrators. Now however, before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this is a view of what's new in reporting services from 50,000 feet. <laughs> I have no interest in showing you details, in answering specific questions. Okay, so this is just like really an overview of everything. Okay, so we don't have time. This is the what sixth video in the course. We don't have time to detail every single one of those. We're going to cover nearly all of these throughout the course, but just not right now. Okay, so I know you're probably going to be having, you're probably going to have questions and you're going to be interested, but it's just not the right time to really go in depth about these. So new things for sysadmins here. Number one, most interesting part from a sysadmin standpoint is that we're no longer dependent on IIS. You know, in SQL 2005, there were some really stringent uh, installation requirements. Uh, you had to have specific settings within IIS set up. You don't have to have any of that anymore. There is no dependency on IIS. The SSRS architecture now includes everything it needs internally. Okay, so ASP.NET is built right in. You can do URL management so easy. You could do URL management in ways in 2008 that we could never have done it in SQL Server 2005. Okay, so very cool. Um, with this new baked-in web server, we now have a new authentication layer. Okay, so in the old days in SQL Server 2005 and 2000, it was IIS that would handle the authentication. I'm sure you remember if you went to SQL Server 2005, you'd go to a web page and then it would prompt you, prompt you up with a little JavaScript authentication box and you'd enter your information. Okay? That was IIS managing that authentication. Okay? Well, today it's SSRS managing all of that authentication. We still have the same authentication schemes, we could still use Windows authentication, for example, uh, but it's not done by IIS. Okay? It's just handled internally inside of reporting services. Okay? 
All right. Uh, one of the other things here, this is just a minor thing, uh, convenience thing, if you will. There's only a single service now in SQL Server 2008. In SQL 2005, we actually had several different services, and it was somewhat of a pain when you needed to change a service account or change a password because you had to do it on three different services, for example. So now there's just one service, the report server service, and it has the same functionality that the report server web service, the report server Windows service uh, that we used to have. Okay, so you're just dealing with a single service. And also here in 2008 are memory limits. So the problem in SQL 2005 was that if you were dealing with some particularly difficult reports to create or you were getting hit with a lot of report creation, then your spikes would just shoot the memory through the roof and then that could cause problems on the box. All right, well, in SQL Server 2008, we can now not only define the maximum memory that's going to be used by reporting services, we can actually get fairly granular with the different processes. And so we can say, I want to only allocate X for this particular thing. We'll kind of get into that when we get into the system administration and talk about configuring our reporting services. All right, I tell you what, let's go ahead and stop here. Let's come back in part two and talk about some of the other new features for report authors and for report admins.